Good day. Uh, we've got another episode here down the rabbit hole with Building Inspector Steve Mason from the town of Rossi. Um, this is the uh, discussion we're having is, as we said, sometimes we go down these rabbit holes looking to see what's in there and if we can any learn anything or and gain any more knowledge. So this time I was, uh, the discussion is under falling under a slab. And how I got there was I was reading an article by David Doyle, who was the uh, president of the Board of Directors for Construction Canada, a very good uh, magazine that they put out. I believe it's a free magazine. You can get it both online and on paper subscription. And it has some interesting articles. And one of these articles, he's talking about the asbestos of the <sighs> radon is the new asbestos of the 2010. And he goes down and saying that the standard for this polyethylene sheet building is a CGSB 5134-M86, which is a Canadian General Standards Board standards. But then as you go down in the article a little farther, you realize that the uh, that standard, first of all, that standard is a retired standard, which is no longer in effect, okay? And it, uh, so it talks about, and then it also talks about uh, the uh, fall short one with punctures and throwing your permanents out the window, which I agree with them on that. And we talk about, he talks about radon and emissions through that there. And uh, in the uh, in the standard, what they'll also talk about in the standard is saying that it's not for below grade uh, applications, it's above grade applications. So uh, I'll take you down to, uh, I'll take you up to this, uh, Go to the billing code and we'll find the billing code right here. Okay, so now if we go up on this article here, this talks about the uh, standard, okay, vapor barrier standard. So once again, it says 4134M, okay, is, is the standard. So then what we'll do is then we go down to the next kind of connecting these dots here. They talk about the polyethylene sheet, right, which is, which is, uh, not less than six million poly, so that's the minimum code requirement in a part nine building. Okay, um, and so we'll go down to the next page, which is uh, telling us that we do have to have a uh, separation between uh, the roof and floor assemblies from on, protected by an air barrier. Okay, now we all know what an air barrier is. It's a sealed barrier with no penetrations for air or radon to go up through. Now we'll go down into the air barrier uh, section here and they talk about, uh, again, they talk about this polyethylene sheet, okay, which is retired, okay, but the issue is, is that um, even though it's retired, there's no standard to replace it, we're stuck with the standard that's in the code, okay. Now the Part 9 National Building Code says that we can use a six mil poly, okay? Um, and so the end of the day is that we've, we've got it, we're stuck with that poly, whether we like it or not, okay? Now, uh, I'm gonna take you up to the, there's a, there, oh, there's this, oh, there, okay. There's the, sorry about the, uh, the, this is the standard for the air barrier, um, there you go. This is the material for, okay, as it says, material in the standard is primarily intended for use in above grade construction. So once again, is that the below ground, it's not, it doesn't talk about. So really don't have a standard that will pertain to, to using poly underneath a slab. However, the part nine code says we can use a six mil poly. Kind of doesn't make a whole pile of sense. So I think the end of the day is that we're stuck with a six mil underneath the poly. Um, most contractors are using a 10 mil poly underneath the slab, which at least with a, with a tensile strength and those things were probably uh, are okay there. Now, when we get into a part five building, which is normally a stamp building, uh, there, is, there is some, um, so you can get 100%, there you go. So a part, so a part five, they, they do require an air barrier on on a part five building, okay? And they do, uh, believe it or not, they do require a radon mitigation system in a part five building. 
Now, how will how we get around the uh, or not around, but how do you get the um, the the poly out of a part uh, greater than a part nine building? Okay, one that falls under part five. Then what you have to do is you'll have your your engineer, your architect or engineer specify something else. Okay, and in this case, I'll show you a picture here. Uh, which I'll, uh, now this is a stego mat made by WR Meadows. Was done on a recent project with uh, a non-part nine. As you can see, this is a this is not red tuck tape. This here is actually a proved uh, sealing tape that goes around these things, and it's a fairly heavy mat. So uh, once again, is that to to kind of wrap it up a bit? Is that in a part nine building stuck with six mil poly? Uh, below grade and uh, above, uh, beyond part nine into a part five building where they've got to go to a mat or an engineer or something. And that's mostly due to puncture resistance because of the weight of the building and all that stuff. Uh, and that's how I've approached it. I don't know if this helps you or not or um, hinders you or whatever, but it's just an information there. So it kind of went out the rabbit hole, down the rabbit hole and popped back up and realizes, you know, in a part nine, we're stuck with poly, but above that, I would get your engineer or your architect to specify something because the tensile strength in a piece of poly that is 10 mil for a, for a four story or non part building, nine building um, might exceed what that can handle. So I hope this down the rabbit hole session helps. Um, anyway, take care and have a great day.